I'm new to your channel. What is the Theology of the Body and the Theology of the Body Institute? Have you ever asked questions like, how do I live my life in a way that will bring true happiness? Why do I have all of these longings in my body and in my soul, and what the heck am I supposed to do with them? What does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be a woman? What does it mean to be human? Our world is utterly confused about these things. And for such a time as this, have we been given the great gift of St. John Paul II's theology of the body. So what is the theology of the body? First of all, it's the working title that St. John Paul II gave to the first major teaching project of his pontificate. But I want to just spend a little time with that phrase, theology of the body. What a remarkable phrase. We tend not to bring these two realities together. We have theology as the study of God over here, and we tend to have the human body and human sexuality over here. But this is precisely the wrong notion that St. John Paul II is addressing in his Theology of the Body. He says, if it seems strange for us to speak of a theology of the body, it shouldn't if we believe in the Incarnation. What is Christmas? It is God taking on flesh. And so John Paul II says, through the reality of the Incarnation, the body entered theology through the main door. Theology of the body. It means our bodies tell a divine story. It's another way of saying we're made in the image and likeness of God as male and female. Let me put out to you John Paul II's thesis statement. It's a mouthful. I'll say it, then we'll unpack it a bit. He says, the body, and only the body, is capable of making visible what is invisible, the spiritual and the divine. It was created by God to transfer into this visible reality of the world the invisible mystery hidden in God from eternity and thus to be a sign of it. Now, big theological mouthful, let's unpack it. The body and only the body is capable of making visible what is invisible, the spiritual and the divine, right? How do you know that I am in this video? You see my body, right? My body makes visible the invisible reality of my spirit. We as human beings, we are not spirits trapped in a body. We are incarnate spirits. There is a profound unity in the human being of the spiritual and the physical. My body reveals to you the spiritual mystery of my soul. But there's more. Because I, like every other human being, I'm made in the image and likeness of God. But because I am made, like you are, in the image and likeness of God, the human body also makes visible something of the divine mystery. John Paul II says the body was created by God to transfer into the visible reality of the world the mystery hidden in God from eternity and thus to be a sign of it. Let's zoom in on that word transfer. Think of a bank transfer. You're taking money from one account, you're putting it in another account, right? God wants to transfer from eternity, from heaven to time and earth, his invisible, infinite mystery. Well, what is that mystery? That mystery is that God himself is an eternal exchange of life-giving love. The Father from all eternity is generating the Son. The Son from all eternity is being generated by the Father. So to share with the Father in the love of the Holy Spirit. What do we read in the book of Genesis? Male and female he created them and he blessed them and said, be fertile and multiply. Our ability as male and female to generate sons and daughters is a sign in the world that transfers from the heavenly bank account to the earthly bank account, if you will, the mystery that God himself is a communion 
of life-giving love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our bodies as male and female in this way, this is another word he uses instead of transfer, in another place he says, the body transposes into this visible world, into history. It transposes the love song of the Trinity, right? To transpose a piece of music means you're putting it in a key that we can sing. There is a love song within God. There is a love song in the Trinity that mere mortals cannot sing. It needs to be transposed into a key that we can sing, and it has been, and it's called the Song of All Songs. Right in the middle of your Bible is the sacred erotic love poetry called the Song of Songs that transposes into a human key the love song found in God for eternity. This is what makes the love of man and woman, this is what makes our bodies as male and female not only biological but theological. Think about it from this perspective. From beginning to end, the Bible tells a story about marriage. It begins in Genesis with our creation as male and female and the call of the two to become one flesh. Throughout the Old Testament, God speaks of his love for his people as the love of a husband for his bride. In the New Testament, the love of the eternal bridegroom is literally embodied when the word is made flesh. Skip to the end of the story, the book of Revelation describes heaven as an eternal marriage, the marriage of Christ and the church. So the Bible begins with a marriage, an earthly marriage in an earthly paradise, and it ends with a heavenly marriage in a heavenly paradise. And the whole point of this marriage that starts the Bible is to point us to that marriage which ends the Bible. This is why Jesus says, in the resurrection, men and women are no longer given in marriage. Why? Because we no longer need a sign to point us to heaven when we're there, right? The ultimate destiny of every human being, the ultimate satisfaction of the cry of the human heart for love, for union, for joy, for happiness, is not the union of man and woman, as wonderful and beautiful as sexual love can be. That, my brothers and sisters, is only a little, little glimmer, a sign, a sacramental reality here on planet Earth that opens us to a far greater reality. Indeed, the ecstasy that awaits us on the other side, the destiny of the human being, male and female, is an ecstasy and bliss in union with the living God forever that the Bible compares to the union of man and woman, husband and wife, in one flesh. And this brings us to the passage in Scripture that St. John Paul II tells us in his Theology of the Body is the summary of everything God wants to tell us. It's the crowning theme of biblical revelation. Are you ready? Here it is. Ephesians 5, 31 to 32, for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two will become one flesh. For what reason? That's simply a quote out of the book of Genesis. But now at long last, St. Paul answers the question, for what reason? Why are we made male and female? Why are the two called to become one flesh? And he says, this is a mega mystery. That's the Greek, often translated, this is a profound mystery, this is a great mystery, but I love the Greek. It has a good ring to it. This is a mega mystery. Have you ever thought of that? Your creation as a man, as a woman, the whole mystery of human sexuality and the joining of the two in one flesh. This is a mega mystery that refers to Christ and the church. How so? Think about it. Christ left his Father in heaven. 
He left the home of his mother on earth to give up his body for his bride so that we, the church, the bride of Christ, might become one flesh with him. Where do we, where does the bride of Christ become one flesh with the bridegroom, Jesus Christ? When the bridegroom says to the bride, this is my body given up for you. The Holy Eucharist is the consummation of the mystical marriage of Christ and the church. Not everyone is called to earthly marriage, but everyone is invited to what the scripture calls the marriage supper of the Lamb. Jesus says, go out into the main streets and invite everyone to this wedding banquet. This is why, my brothers and sisters, theology of the body is for every body. It's not only for married people. This is an invitation into the deepest essence of what it means to be human. And so I like to say, if you have a body, this theology applies to you. My brothers and sisters, open your eyes. We are going through a major crisis in the world, and it is a crisis of the body. It is a crisis of human sexuality. We no longer know why we are male and female. As I said at the start, for such a time as this have we been given St. John Paul II's theology of the body, but it needs to be translated into a language that normal people can understand, and that's why the Theology of the Body Institute exists. Check out our channel. Type in Theology of the Body Institute and any number of keywords like masculinity, femininity, Eucharist, uh, apologetics, marriage, dating, relationships, lust, pornography, contraception, homosexuality. Go down the list, type in those keywords, start exploring our content, and check out the link below, tobforfree.com, and we will send you three free sessions to our introductory course on the theology of the body. The Theology of the Body Institute exists to help men and women around the world come to understand really and truly how beautiful they really are and how their body reveals the mega mystery hidden in God from all eternity.